to take a little different uh, approach to these next set of videos here. We're going to talk about some scripting languages that will help you along in, in your ability to understand what's going on in your network. And if you're going to be a, uh, a cyber analyst, stuff like that, you're going to really need to be able to understand logs and be able to navigate through them. And this is going to be very controversial, and I want to stay away from the controversy. Let me make it very clear. There are lots and lots of tools, and I do not want to get into which tool is better. That's like asking a carpenter, here, you've got your thousand tools, which tool is better? Well, it depends on the job you're doing, and there is a place, a time and a place for every tool. And I'm just going to focus on tools that are a little less... Um, uh, they don't get quite as much spotlight on them. That doesn't make them better. It just says that they're a tool that you can use. And in some situations, they have uh, usability that doesn't exist as, as easy as other places. Um, we're gonna talk about PowerShell as this video is entitled, Why Use PowerShell on Linux? And I just wanna make it really clear. First thing to know, uh, PowerShell is fully adapted on Linux. You can use, you can download it on pretty much all flavors of Linux now. And something to remember is that the, uh, uh, I can't remember his first name, Snover is the guy who helped develop PowerShell for Microsoft. He was a big contributor to the uh, Linux Unix Bash um, creation. So a lot of people I've heard will call PowerShell Bash 2.0. Bash hasn't received a major upgrade in many, many years. And it shows how great Bash has been. But um, it, uh, the PowerShell is a, gives you some other capabilities. It puts an object-oriented flavor to it. And I know you'll get a lot of people, well, I don't use do Python and things like that. I'm just gonna show you some cool little tricks you can do completely on a Linux environment with PowerShell. So I've installed PowerShell on this device. I have a nice, clean, empty directory, which by the way, uh, all you have to do to start PowerShell, you can run commands straight from Bash or you can type PWSH and it will open up a PowerShell terminal. I'm currently running PowerShell 7.3. And again, still the same things work. I can go, uh, I can make dir some directory and I've got my, and so PowerShell allows you to still write those bash commands that you've been doing forever. You can just write your bash stuff right here. But I wanna show some cool features. You, it brings the power of commandlets and things. Um, so if I go hit get process, notice it tab completes. It does everything you're, you're used to from bash right here. But now I can get all my processes running. But the coolest part about this is it's object oriented. It's not text-based. So here's some cool things because of it being object. I'm going to go say dollar sign s that declaring a variable it's called s why did I call it s because I wanted to and if I go get process tab complete that I can now call at any time dollar sign s and I get the same thing watch this but because it's pow it's object oriented I can now tab complete and it will tell me all of the fields in there I can get other options I can go dollar sign name and now I'll just get back the name values dollar sign and again tab completes all of these variables I pulled back all the CPU I can do dollar sign s then it's a piping language get object select object this is very uh, SQL almost like select object. I want just the name. That's another way I can do it. Cool little feature there. Um, but it, it doesn't end there. I could do dollar sign S. Um, I'm going to pipe to, I, I, I can use commands like this. And I'm going to write um, bash, bash text file dot text. Look what I wrote. There is now some bash file.txt. I can cat bash file.txt. It just wrote that entire text file. It wrote into that text file my git process. Um, I can do same thing. Instead, I'm going to write to export CSV, um, my CSV of processes. Dot CSV. I write that, and we can do a cat on my 
and it just created a nice little CSV file. Even cooler, I can take dollar sign convert to to I'm going to go convert to JSON. Oops. And so I'm going to convert to JSON, and then I'm going to pipe it out to some file. And if I go look, I now have some JSON file, cat, some JSON text. And it just wrote the entire file as JSON. Really cool. Not a whole lot of effort necessary to take these things and manipulate them. It, it takes the power of objects to a whole new level in your bash uh, terminal, and it takes very little effort to use it. So you can do a lot of manipulation here. I can, I can go through the same thing. I can import JSON, convert it to CSV. You can do all sorts of really cool things. You can import CSVs, and it, um, let's, let's do that. As I said, I've already done, I'm going to make a new variable, A, and I'm going to do equals import CSV, and then I'll just call out my, um, what files do I have there? I got my my CSV of processes. I do that, and now dollar sign $A has, there's my variables, things like that. I can do name, and it works just like that. I can pull back all those values. Let's just show another really cool process concept here. I wrote all my processes into a file. What if I want to see if things have changed? So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do Audacity. And so I'm starting Audacity. I just want to make start a new process. I'm going to minimize it here on my screen. And I'm going to do get compare object. And I can actually just take, as we see, it's already auto-completing from my history. I'm just going to do that. Select object, name. So I'm going to grab the current processes, and I'm going to import my CSV. Remember, I wrote that there. And let's make sure I get the right syntax. And then I'm going to. It just wants the property after you do that. So import.csv and my and properties. We're going to compare on name. If I hit this, we can see that it grabbed. Is my Git process not showing Audacity? So I don't understand how I'm blind, but sitting right there after looking at the code, there is grab the current processes that we're running. I grab the old list of processes and I can see the difference. It told me that I'm missing Audacity from the original. These processes have been added and these, uh, this one, this is not, and so you can look at the, the, the way these errors are pointing, say which file is different. But anyway, so very quickly I can compare two, uh, two sets of files together. I can navigate. I can take these things as objects, convert them, move them around. Um, it's really quite cool. You can mix and match. You can write Bash scripts that call PowerShell and PowerShell that calls Bash. And you can then, if you really want to, add another language. You can call Python. You can all sorts of things. It's, it's just a great tool. Um, if it's another tool in your tool belt. If you're going to be working on Windows systems, you really want to know PowerShell to navigate around that operating system fast and for automation. But it's, it helps as well in PowerShell. And so I've actually done in my lame trainings, I've created a event generator and I did it completely in PowerShell. I could have done it in another language, but I wanted to prove it can be done in any language. And then you can just port it, uh, port it over. So it's running in PowerShell. You need to do nothing besides that PowerShell on Linux, have PowerShell on um, and it's native 
PowerShell is always running on Windows, and it'll just work. Same on a Mac. Anyway, it's just it's just another tool in your tool belt. Just wanted to give you a kind of a flavor as to why I'm focusing on PowerShell to understand that it's it's useful in a lot of different situations. Anyway, I hope this is helpful, and I hope this helps you on your journey from becoming a, a lame analyst to an awesome analyst. Anyway, have a good one.